this week I want to finish the exterior of the mouse house. Yesterday I painted it a very light beige color, kind of peachy color. I was going to go all white, but I think that I want a Tudor style of cottage. Am I saying that right? Tudor. It is to be said as Tudor. Tudor. And now you know it all. Did you get this? Now I know it all. Tudor. I'm going to say Tudor because I think that's an accent. <laughs> <laughs> so I painted all the windows brown and I painted some popsicle sticks as well that I'm going to use to make the faux wood beam look on the outside of the exterior. The dollhouse though is also kind of a Victorian house so there's going to be kind of a mix of styles going on but it is a pretend house for mice so I think that's okay. I also want to do kind of a stone patio so I tore up some egg carton to make little pieces of stone. I'm a little worried that my mice are not going to fit into the house now that I've seen the size of the dollhouse, but I've decided that they will just be sitting mice if they don't and they'll never stand up in the dollhouse. <laughs> I've mentioned this before, but with my dollhouses, I like to use things that I just find around my apartment or at the dollar store or thrift store. The world of miniatures can get so expensive. You can spend 10 to $20 on just one little item. So it can cost hundreds of dollars if you want to finish just one room and have it look authentic. Someday I might want to put that kind of investment into a dollhouse. But I personally really enjoy the challenge of trying to make these items myself. On one of my dollhouse makeovers, I had someone criticize me because I wasn't a purist because I didn't make my furniture to scale, which I didn't even know that there are purists in the miniature world. <laughs> Although from what I read, scale wasn't even a thing in dollhouses until the 20th century. So furniture was rarely ever uniform, which means that I am technically a purist because I'm doing it the traditional way. And I never get those types of comments from other creators. It's always someone that's kind of hiding behind a computer and not showcasing anything that they've made. And I think that's because people that create content and put it out for people to see, we've already criticized it ourselves. We are our own worst critics. And I know what it feels like to get negative feedback. And so I don't want to pass that along to someone else who's trying to share something that they made. I heard the term recently, vulnerability hangover, and I relate to that so much. Every time I post something on social media, I feel so vulnerable and I usually want to take it down immediately. But at the same time, it also brings me a lot of joy when I share something that makes someone else happy. So all that to say, if you make something and you're excited about it and you want to share it, do it and don't worry about what anyone else is going to say about it. Now, let's build these mice a house.
Good morning. So I am feeling a bit off today. I'm quite anxious, but thankfully I have an appointment this morning uh, for massage therapy. I've already done some cleaning. I did some yoga, but I'm just feeling very out of sorts, very unbalanced. I think that I'm going to go to the thrift store actually and maybe Michael's to see if I can find any more little things for the mouse house. So yeah, I'm just gonna take it slow today, do some window shopping. Working on crafts always helps me to just shut off my brain, but sometimes you just need a little more than that. <laughs> cute little sewing machine from Michaels with a 40% off coupon. I want her to have a little sewing room and my mice have arrived. Aren't they adorable? This is the little baker and he's got a baguette and a rolling pin and she's got a little bouquet of I think berries. I showed them the exterior of their house last night and they were speechless so I think they like it. I just picture him making them some handmade pasta and she's coming back from the market with a little centerpiece. <laughs> the sewing machine is almost the same height as her, so it'll be a standing sewing machine. I didn't end up picking up anything else besides the sewing machine except for this dress which I fell in love with at the thrift store. I have an obsession with leopard print, especially if it comes in a really funky color, and I just love this mustard color. I have like two other leopard print dresses hanging up right now that I've only worn once, so I'll just add this to the collection. We also got a Hot Topic store, and they had a bunch of lounge flies and pins from Disney World, and that was really fun to look at. It kind of made me feel like I was back in a Disney World store for a few minutes which was an instant mood booster. And the prices actually weren't too bad for the backpacks considering the exchange rate. And I love Winnie the Pooh and I had a ton of Winnie the Pooh stuff. So I'm going to finish the exterior today. There's only a few more things I wanna to do to it. I wanted to kind of add some greenery to it. So I think I'm going to use this moss from the dollar store. There's like this stringy moss in here that I think I'm going to try to use as vines. And I have some dried baby breath that's really tiny. And I have some like tiny mushrooms but I'm gonna make a little dessert before I get started on it. Full stop. Can't believe I live in your thoughts. I think about you all the time, morning, evening, and midnight. Such a wonderful delight. Forgo. Give up everything.
Oh.